Hi everybody, my name is Nicola Murphy and I am one of the lecturers at the School of Law in NUI Galway. And I am also the programme director for the BA in Law. And I'm here to talk to you today about studying law through an arts degree in Galway. Now you may already have listened to my colleague Connor Hanley's talk about studying law and the importance and benefit of studying law in general, but I'm just here to talk to you about studying law as part of an arts degree. Now, studying law is obviously always a good idea. Law is relevant to everything we do, and studying law at NUI Galway is also an extremely good idea. So the law school was the winner of the law school of the year in 2019, and for this year, was ranked 85th for law. So that's not just in Ireland or Europe, that's in the entire world. On top of that, there are various important centres for research and excellence that are associated with the School of Law. So for example, the Irish Centre for Human Rights, which was set up in the 1980s, is a very, very important uh, centre for the studying of human rights all around the world. The same thing goes for the Centre for Disability Law and Policy, which is an international reputation uh, in the area of disability law and policy. And then there's a Centre for Housing Law and Housing Rights and Policy. And obviously, housing rights in today's world is an incredibly important area. So these are good reasons for studying at NUIG. But why choose the BA in law rather than one of our other law programs? Well, one reason is the flexibility. So you can take an absolutely enormous range of subjects with law. So if you wanted to do, say, our Bachelor of Civil Law program or our Law and Business program, you study law plus a very restricted number of non-law subjects as well. When it comes to the BA in law, almost every BA subject is available for you to take with law. So there are only a couple of subjects that you can't actually take with law in the BA. So for example, you can't take psychology, you can't take Celtic civilization, but otherwise you can choose just about everything. So maybe there's a subject that you really, really want to study but you also really, really want to study law. So let's say you really, really want to do philosophy or you really, really want to study politics and you can study those as part of one of our usual law programs, but you could take those subjects with law as part of the BA. So that's the first big advantage of the BA in law. Another huge advantage is that if you're somebody who's not completely sure that you'd like to study law or that it's really for you, it's a good way of testing it out. So it's possible for you to take law as one of your three subjects in first year. So you haven't studied law at school, you don't know if you're going to like it, um, you're not absolutely sure what studying law is going to involve, so you take it as one of your three subjects. At the end of the year you might think, well, it's not really for me, I don't think I really like law, that's fine, you can just drop it and continue with the other two. So it's not as if you're stuck with a subject you don't like for three or four years. So you can drop it at the end of the first year if you don't like it. And even if you did drop it at the end of the first year, you will have learned an awful lot of really useful things about the Irish legal system and about some aspects of Irish law. So even if you don't continue with it after first year, it's still a hugely beneficial subject to take. Or maybe at the end of your first year, you realise, yes, I absolutely love this. I am definitely going to continue with law. Then that's great. Another advantage is that if you do a BA in law and then you do a one-year LLB, something you're going to explain about in a few minutes, it's the equivalent of a full law degree. So you do your three-year three BA law plus another subject. You then do a one-year LLB, where you cover any of the important law subjects you wouldn't have taken as part of your BA. 
And then you're in exactly the same position as somebody who did their four-year Bachelor of Civil Law, except you've got the advantage that you've got two degrees, a BA and an LLB, plus you've got expertise in another area besides just law. So maybe your other subject was history or economics or IT or German. So you've got that as well as law. So these are really good reasons for choosing the BA. Now, people very often ask me, well, what are good subjects to take with law in first year? And my answer is always, you should take whatever really interests you because that's the most important thing. So if you've got an eye to thinking, well, what will an employer like later on? Obviously, a, a, a subject that helps you to get a job is really important. But if you study something that you really don't like, you're not interested in, you're just doing it because you think you ought to, you are not going to study as hard, you are not going to do as well. So if you choose something that you really, really feel passionate about, you're going to come out with a good degree. You're going to come out with a good result. And that's what's really important. Now, there are some subjects that are particularly popular for our law BA students. So SOC and Paul, so Sociological and Political Studies, is probably the most popular combination with law. And they work really, really well together. Um, if you're a student who is good at languages, then I would always recommend that you continue with the language. So if you were good at languages at school, then definitely take the opportunity to take a language now. Um, so a language is always a really, really great thing to have as part of your degree. Now, obviously, if you were not good at languages at school and you really struggled, um, then in that case, not a good idea to take up a new one. But maybe you were good at languages, but you didn't actually like the language you studied. So maybe you did French at school. You were good at French, but you didn't really like French maybe very much. Well, you have an opportunity to take up a different language. So maybe you could do Italian or Spanish. They're both languages you can take as a beginner. So languages, if you're good at languages, are always a good partner with any degree, no matter what the degree is. Obviously, with law, if you're thinking maybe of working in the EU afterwards, then obviously uh, taking a language would be a really, really great way of enhancing your law degree. Um, other subjects that are popular with law would be English and history. Uh, economics is also a very, very popular combination with law. But as I already said, you can take any subject, almost any subject, from the list of subjects available on the BA. So very, very few subjects can't be taken with law. So you take whatever subject you are most interested in. I'm just mentioning these as some of the most popular ones. So how does the BA in law actually work? Well, in first year, there's no restrictions. Anybody can choose law as one of their three subjects. And the class is fairly big. It's not an enormous class, like we'll say the Sock and Paul classes or the English classes, um, but there would be about 220 students in first year. So first year, no restrictions, anybody can take law. However, there is a cap on the number of places in second year. So the top 130 students will be offered a place at the end of first year. And this is based on their first year exam results. So there are only 130 law places in second year. Now, once you get into second year, that's it. You're now on the BA law program. You don't have to qualify again for third year, that's all. So the um, qualification happens at the end of first year. So if you're in the top 130, out of the 220 or so students in your class, you will be allowed to continue with law into second year. And what will you actually study as part of the BA in law? Well, in first year, there are three subjects, Irish legal system, law of torts, and legal skills. So what do these involve? Well, Irish legal system is a basic introductory course that every law student on every law program in the world would take. They will all have different names, but they're all basically the same kind of introductory program. So you get an introduction to your own legal system. So in this case, the Irish legal system, how it works, who does what, how law is made, how the courts function. And it then gives you the necessary background you need for all of your other law subjects. 
So it means that if you're in the middle of a constitutional law class or a criminal law class, the lecturer doesn't have to explain to you the way that the court system works or the difference between a piece of legislation and a case decided by a judge. You already have covered all of that in your introductory course, Irish Legal System, at the start of first year. Next comes law of torts. And that might sound like something you've never heard of. You might wonder what this is. But in fact, when people think about law, um, besides criminal law, what they most often think of as law is actually the law of torts. Because anything to do with personal injuries is a tort. So tort comes from the French word and it means the law of private wrongs. So let's say you've been knocked off your bike and you want to sue the person who injured you. Well, that will be a tort action. So it'll be based on the tort of negligence. You'll take your personal injuries action against the driver who knocked you off your bike. That's all tort. Another example of a tort would be if somebody wrote and published information about you that was incorrect and damaged your reputation. So that is defamation. And you would sue them in the tort of defamation. So that's what tort is all about. So it's the law relating to personal wrongs. And it's a very, very interesting area of law. The final first year subject is legal skills. So that is all about legal writing, legal research. So learning how to, let's say, uh, cite references for cases, how to look up things like cases, all of that kind of thing is covered in the legal skills module. So you can see that if you've taken these three modules in first year, you will have a very good idea by the end of it, whether you'd like to continue with law or not, whether you're going to like law or not. Then in second year, there are three compulsory subjects, constitutional law, contract law, and legal methods and research. So constitutional and contract law are obviously self-explanatory. And legal methods and research is an advanced version of the legal skills module you take in first year. And in second year, there are also some optional subjects that you can take. Um, so the optional subjects change every few years, but at the moment, the ones we offer are environmental law, comparative disability law, and health and safety law. And then in the final year, there are three subjects, European Union law, criminal law, and administrative law. And these are the same subjects that students in, we'll say, the law and business program or the Bachelor of Civil Law program would take. So they're exactly the same subjects that they take on those programs. They're taught usually by the same people. It's exactly the same syllabus. It's exactly the same exam. So they're not different from the modules that are taught or the subjects that are taught on the we'll say the, 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 the more traditional law degrees, it's just that you don't do as many of them. So you do the same modules, you just don't do as many. So what do you do after that? So you've got your BA in law, what might you want to do? So there are obviously lots of interesting career possibilities. So you might want to go into the civil service you might want to work for an organization like the United Nations or the Euro European Union. Again, very handy for students who've taken a language as part of their BA. Maybe you want to work for a non-governmental organization like say Amnesty International. Students have gone into journalism, banking or accountancy, gone into academia. You might decide you want to uh, do a research degree, um, do a master's, do a PhD in law. And of course, there are other options as well. But of course, the most obvious career choice for somebody with a BA in law would be to become a lawyer, to become a barrister or a solicitor. Now, if you have a BA in law, then you will have studied quite a lot of the essential subjects that are needed for the entrance exams to the Law Society and to the King's Inns. So these are the professional bodies that deal with professional training for solicitors and barristers. But having done a BA in law, you obviously would not be able to do the entrance exams 
for these professions yet because you wouldn't have covered all of the subjects that are required. So even though you'd have done quite a lot of them, as you saw from the preceding slide, you wouldn't have done everything. So for example, you wouldn't have studied land law. And that's clearly very important for a solicitor and for a barrister. So in that case, what you can do is an LLB. So the law school provides an LLB degree, which is a postgraduate degree, which takes three years. However, people who've taken the BA in law have already covered so much law as part of their three-year degree that they get to skip the first two years of the LLB and go straight into final year. So you can do a one-year LLB where you can cover all of the remaining subjects you would need for professional requirements. So if you have a three-year BA in law plus a one-year LLB, that's the equivalent of a full law degree. So that's exactly the same as doing your Bachelor of Civil Law, except you have the advantage. You have two degrees, a BA and an LLB. So you've got your BA, LLB, and that means you can then sit the entrance exams for the Law Society if you want to be a solicitor, or for the King's Inn if you want to be a barrister. Now, I want to point out that all a law degree any law degree qualifies you for is to just sit these entrance exams. So it doesn't allow you to practice as a solicitor or barrister. It doesn't allow you to go straight into training as a solicitor or barrister because no Irish law degree does that. So no matter where your degree is from, whether it's from UCC or from Trinity or from UL or from Galway, all law degrees get you to the same point to have a law degree to allow you to sit these entrance exams to uh, be allowed to begin training for the legal professions. Now, when it comes to our BA, um, it's a very, very old degree. In fact, the BA in law is decades and decades older than any of our other law programs. And you can see that having a BA and an LLB um, has been a great help to some of our graduates. So these are some people who would have been um, students at NUIG, which was then University College Galway in the early to mid 1980s. So starting with Ms. Justice Deirdre Fottrell, who did her BA and LLB here in the 1980s. She's a, a QC, so that means she's a senior barrister based in London, and she's a deputy high court judge for England and Wales. Um, Maura Whelan, um, who did her BA and LLB here in Galway, uh, was the first female Irish Attorney General in 2011, and she's now a judge of the Irish Court of Appeal. And then we have Frances Comerford, who is now Mr. Justice Frances Comerford, again, a BA LLB graduate of NUI Galway, now an Irish Circuit Court judge. So you can see that your BA LLB qualification will get you very, very far. Okay, so that's all I wanted to say about the BA in law, but if you have any queries about it and how it works, here's my email address. You can email me as the program director and ask me about it. And please do look at the course website as well. Um, you might also look at the Law Society um, website. So there's lots of useful information there about studying law at NUIG. So thank you all very much for listening.